What's happening guys? My name is Nicholas Renault and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at time series forecasting using the Facebook profit package. Let's take a deeper look as to what we're going to be going through. So in order to build our time series forecast with profit, we're going to be covering three key things. So first up, we're going to take a look at how we can prepare our data for time series forecasting using the pandas package. Then we're going to train our model using the profit library. And last but not least, we're going to make some forecast predictions and plot some stuff out. Now let's take a look at how this is all going to fit together. So first up, what we're going to be doing is loading in our data set into a data frame using the pandas.readCSV function. Then we're going to build up our model using Facebook profit. So this allows us to accelerate the time to building a time series forecast model. So it's really easy to train. Then what we're going to do is we're actually going to make some predictions. So we'll create some future time periods and actually forecast forward. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty, so in order to build our time series model with Facebook profit, there's four key steps that we need to go through. So first up, what we need to do is install and import our dependencies. Then what we're going to do is read in and process our data. So for this particular model, what we're going to be doing is using a retail sales forecasting model, but you could change this, right? So if you wanted to forecast weather, or if you wanted to forecast um, stock indices, you could definitely just sub in the model here. And I'll actually comment as to when you can do that. So basically you're just going to be shifting your data set and plugging in your own rather than using the one that I've provided. Then what we're going to do is train our model and then forecast away. So in order to do this, we're obviously going to be needing a Facebook profit. So in order to install it, we really just need to run these two commands here. So pip install pystan and pip install Facebook profit. Now, if you are running on Windows, you're going to need a compiler. So I'll include a link to this in terms of how to go ahead and install that. If you're running on a Mac or a Linux machine, it's a little bit more simple. Now also, if you want the code for this tutorial, just go to github.com forward slash nicknocknack forward slash time series forecasting profit. And I've included the Jupyter Notebook. So it's called facebookprofit.ipynb, which includes all the code that we're going to write as well as a test data set. So you can see it's all written there and we've also got a data set, so dataset.csv. So if you want to pick this up, really easy. So just go and clone down this repo and you'll be able to run through it. Now, in this case, we're going to do it from scratch and explain each one of the different components involved. So first up, what we need to do is install and import our dependencies. So as I said, we need PyStan and we need Profit. Now, I've already got Pandas installed, so I don't need to install that. But if you don't, then make sure you include that as part of your pip install command. So first up, let's go on ahead and install PyStan and Profit. So that's PyStan and Profit installed. Now I already had it installed, so it went pretty quickly. If you're installing it for the first time, it might take a little bit longer. So in terms of the command that we ran, it's exclamation mark pip install PyStan, so P-Y-S-T-A-N, and then space FB Profit. So this basically allows us to install both packages on a single line. Normally what I'll do is I'll space it out on two different lines, so you can see that, but in this case, pretty straightforward, pip install PyStan and Facebook Profit, and you're good to go. Now, the next thing that we need to do is actually import these dependencies. So let's go on ahead and import them. Alrighty, so we've now gone and imported our dependencies. So you can see that we've imported pandas. And in order to do that, I've written import pandas as PD. So this basically allows us to take the pandas library and just shorten it so that we can just call it by using PD. Then from Facebook profit, so we've run from FB profit, import profit. So this gives us all of our profit dependencies. Another quick thing to call out that I forgot to mention. So I've just imported uh, warnings and ignored any of the simple warnings. So basically, whenever you're working with profit, you get these big red warnings sometimes. So this just makes it a little bit cleaner. All right, so that's our dependency installed and imported. Now what we need to do is read in some data and process our dates. So in this particular case, we're going to be working with this data set here. So it's called dataset.csv. Now, if we open this up, let's take a look at what it looks like. So you can see that we've got a column with a time date, and this includes a whole bunch of dates, and it looks like it goes until about 
end of 2020. And then we've also got two other columns for product and store. So these look like they might be product and store related to add to that level. So when we're performing our summary statistics within Pandas, we just wanna make sure that we've only got a single product and a single store because we're predicting one single time series. Now, if you wanted to, you could loop through and produce multiple sets of time series forecast. In this case, we're just gonna be doing one. So it looks like we've also got a value column as well. Alrighty, back to our Jupyter Notebook. So now what we're going to do is read it in. So in order to read in our data set, we're going to use the read CSV method. So let's do it. Alrighty, so we've written df equals pd dot read CSV. So this is a pandas method. So you can see that we've got our shortened form of pandas over here. And then we've passed through the name and the full path to our data set. Now, because our data set is in the same directory as our Jupyter Notebook, we can just write in the data set name. If you've got it in different directories, you need to include the full path to that. Now, if we take a look at our data set by typing in DF head, you can see that it looks pretty similar to what we had in our Excel Notebook, and so it should. Now, what we can do is we can take a look at some summary statistics. So if we type in df.describe, you can see that we've got our count, our mean, our standard deviation, as well as our min and our different quartiles. Now, what's most important though, is we check how many unique values that we've got in product and store, because we wanna make sure that we've only got a single value. So to do that, we can use the unique method. So let's go on ahead and do that. Alrighty, so it looks like we've got a single value in both our product and our store column. So it's all good. We don't need to do too much additional filtering. What we'll eventually do when we build up our time series forecast is we're just gonna drop these two columns because when we actually build a data set for profit, what we actually need is just two columns. So one for DS, which represents our dates, and then one called Y, which represents our values. So in this case, our time date is going to represent our dates after a little bit of pre-processing, and our value is going to be our Y column. Now, the next thing that we need to do is actually process this a little bit, because right now this time date column actually isn't representing our dates appropriately. So if we actually take a look at our data types by typing in df.dtypes, you can see that our time date is just an integer at the moment. We actually need it to be a date time value. So what we're gonna do is perform a little bit of pre-processing to convert that into a date time format. So let's go on ahead and start doing that. Alrighty, so we've now gone and done our date pre-processing, so we've written four lines of code there. Now, three of these lines are really to do with extracting our year, month, and our day. So if we take a look at our top five rows again, so what we're basically doing is we're grabbing our date time column here, so this column, and then we're going through and we're looping through each one of our values and we're grabbing the last four values because this represents our year. So to do that, we've used our lambda function, We've converted our value to our string and then we've gone and grabbed our last four values. So this is just an array indexing method. Then what we've gone and done is done a similar thing for our month and for our day. So in this case, our indexing filter is a little bit different. So in this case, to grab our month, we've gone from our sixth value, which will be over here, and we've gone all the way to our negative four value, which will be those two values. For our day, we've just gone from six and we've gone out that way. So you can see that the colon is pointing in a different position. And then what we've gone and done is we've concatenated all of those together. So we've grabbed our year plus, and we've added a dash, a month plus we've added a dash, and our day in order to get to this date time value here. And then we've used the pd.datetime index to convert it to a date time format. So if we actually take a look at our D types now, you can see that our DS column is actually a date time value. So now we're looking good. Now what we can do is drop all the columns that we don't need. So we've got our value column, which we'll eventually rename to Y. We can drop our date time column, our product column, store column. And remember, we can only drop product and store because they're our unique values. So we've only got one product and one store. So we don't actually need these, not adding value. And then we're gonna drop our year, our month, and our date. So let's go on ahead and drop those and then we'll rename our columns.
Okay, so we've now gone and dropped our columns. So to do that, we've used the pandas method drop, and then we've passed through all the columns that we want to drop. So in this case, we want to drop time date, time date, product, product, store, store, year, month, day. So we've dropped all, what is that, six columns, and then we've passed through a couple of parameters. So we need to pass through access equals one if we're dropping columns rather than rows. And then we've specified in place equals true because we want to apply it on that data set, not create a new one. And then what we've gone and done is we've renamed our column. So in this case, we had two columns left. We had our value and we had our DS column. So we've just renamed them Y and then we've left our other column DS. So if we take a look now, we've now got two columns. And remember I said right at the start, we need two columns in order to work with profit. So we need a Y column and a DS column. So now we've got them. Now, if you had multiple products or if you had multiple sets of time series, you can also filter through. So what you can basically do is use a filtering method to filter through. So for example, we could type in DF product equals product X, Y, Z, one, two, three, and actually make that filter appropriate. So this would allow you to filter through and get the specific products or the specific stores or the specific time series that you need. Now, in our particular case, we've only got one product and one store, so we don't actually need to do that. But if you came across that, that's how you'd handle that. Alrighty, cool. So we've now got our data set sort of ready for modeling. So let's start building our model. So in this particular case, it's really straightforward. So we just need to instantiate our profit model and then fit it. So let's start doing that. Alrighty, and that is our model trained. So you can see that it trains really, really quickly. That's one of the cool things about Profit and one of the things I love about it. It trains really, really quickly and you tend to get quite an accurate forecast. So in order to train our model, we've written two lines of code. So we've instantiated our Profit model. So this is basically saying we're creating a new model. And so to do that, what we've done is we've used our Profit class, which we brought in right up here in our install and import step. And then we've specified two keyword parameters. Interval width equals 95%. So this looks at our confidence interval. And then we specify daily seasonality equals true. Now, the only reason we specify daily seasonality equals true is that because we've actually got dates in there. And now I know from previous analysis that we've got a little bit of seasonality in our days. So we've specified that. But keep in mind, you don't need to specify this. You can actually drop it and you'll still have a model built. Then what we've done is we've gone and trained our model. So to do that, We've grabbed our model that we set up up here as variable M and we've used our fit method on our data frame to go and fit our model. So we've now actually got a trained model here. So just by using M.fit and then passing through our data frame, we've now got a fit model. Pretty easy, right? Now the next thing that we can do is actually go on ahead and make some predictions. So let's go on ahead and do that. And there you go. So we've now gone and forecasted forward and actually made some predictions. So you can see here that we've now got our data frame. So we've actually got it stored inside of a new data frame called forecast. So from here, whenever you're going and forecasting forward, you're going to get a whole bunch of information. So you're going to get your trend, your Y hat lower, Y hat upper. So these are your upper and lower estimates. You're also going to get your trend, your additive terms, lower and upper. You're also going to get your daily seasonality, so on and so forth. Now, if you scroll all the way to the right, you're going to get this column Y hat, and that represents your prediction. Now, right now, we're taking a look at the top row. So this isn't actually our future periods, but if we look at the bottom, so if we look at the tail set of our forecast data frame, you can see that we've got our future forecast periods forecasted out. And again, you've got all of this additional information. So it gives you more than just a straight forecast. You get a whole heap of additional terms. So trend, Y hat, upper, lower. You get your additive terms, what your weekly trends and what your weekly effects look like. So you can actually break this out into a really, really detailed time series forecast. Now let's take a look at how we actually did this. So again, using our trained model, what we did, so remember we set up our variable M, which held our profit model. We ran the make future data frame method. And to that, we passed through the number of periods that we wanna fo forecast forward. So we forecasted periods up to 100. So if we take a look at the tail of our data frame or our main data frame, you can see that we went up to about the 16th of December, 2020. Now from our forecast, that goes all the way out to the 26th of March, 2021. 
So it actually pushes further forward. So we then specified our frequency, so we want it by day. And then what we did is we used the predict function and we passed through our future data frame, so the one with our additional periods, to go on ahead and forecast forward. So again, we used the predict function there. So pretty similar to when you're building different machine learning models, you fit using the fit method and you predict using the predict method. Then what we did is we used the head method to display the first five rows, which again is our historical data. But if we look at the tail, so forecast.tail, we're going to be able to see our forecast. Now, if we wanted to just extract our dates and our actual prediction, we can just do a quick filtering method. And that's going to give us just our two columns that we want. So you can see now that we've only got our date and our predicted forecast. Now, again, these are going to be our historical periods. These are our future predicted periods. So this gives us quite a fair bit of information as to what our forecast looks like. Now, if we want, we can also plot these out. And so what you're basically getting here is the blue line represents your prediction or your Y hat value. These shaded blue regions represent your different bounding boxes. So your Y hat upper and your Y hat lower. So you can see that our data set has a little bit of seasonality during the earlier months and then spikes up, goes down, goes up, then goes back down and goes up. And you can see that in our forecast period, so we've got them down here, that we are in fact sort of mimicking that pattern. So you can see that we're pretty close to estimating within a range what our predicted periods look like. So our black dots are our actual values from our forecast. Blue line is our prediction or our Y hat and our shaded area represents our different bounding boxes. Now, one of the other cool plots that you actually get inside of Profit is the ability to decompose your trend. So let's take a look at that. And there you go. So to do that, what we've done, oh, we didn't actually explain the last bit. So in order to get this chart up here, all you need to do is grab your Profit model. So in this case, it's stored in variable M as we took a look at before. And then we just ran the plot method. Then to that, we pass through our forecast data frame, which we had from our prediction over here. And that gives us our plot automatically. So these are built into profit. So you don't need to do anything additional. It just sort of comes up. Then the next plot that we've done is we've plot our component. So up here, we just did a straight plot. Here, we again grabbed our profit model and we used the method plot components. To that, we pass our forecast data frame. Now, this gives you a lot of information about your different trends, whether or not it's all weekly or daily seasonality. So it's nice to know that it's breaking down and decomposing your data set. So you can see here that our overall trend is pushing upwards. And so this basically is stating that from 2017 to 2020-ish, we were looking at an upward trend. We can also take a look at our weekly trend. So it looks like we maybe sold a lot more on Thursday, sold a lot less on Sunday and we sort of averaged out on the other days. Then if we take a look at our yearly seasonality, so you can see that over the, our earlier months, so January to, what would that be, April-ish, uh, we're selling less. Likewise, in our later months of Jan or our earlier months of Jan, whichever way you want to take a look at it. And then during the middle of the year, we were selling a lot more. So maybe there's, this could potentially be something to do with weather or seasonality in that respect. And then we've also got daily seasonality as well. And this actually takes a look at how the day and the time affects our sales. And that about wraps it up. So that's how to build a forecast using the Facebook Profit Package. So we've done quite a fair bit. So we installed our libraries. So using pip install, PyStand and Facebook Profit. We then read in our data set using the pd.readcsv method and performed a bunch of date transformations. Then we went and trained our models. So again, pretty easily, just two methods. So M dot profit or M equals profit and then M dot fit to fit. And then we went and forecasted our model. So these two key lines here, so make future data frame and M dot predict allow you to go and build your forecast. And that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell so you get notified of when I release future videos. And let me know what you're going to be using the profit package to forecast. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.